I've had a number of questions recently about Acura's super handling all-wheel drive system and how it differs from the rest of the competition. Last week I had a video out talking about weight balance and in that weight balance video I said that basically front wheel drive oriented systems have an engine right here and then we have the front wheels right here and the engine is basically right on top of the front wheels. This is very different from a rear wheel drive layout where we have the front wheels here and then the engine block is sort of this way in the car. We have the transmission behind that and that causes the weight balance to be shifted aft of the front wheels whereas this setup tends to have the weight sort of shifted towards the front wheels. This is how rear wheel drive cars have a 50-50 weight balance and many front wheel drive cars tend to have more of a 40-60 uh, weight balance. So that's uh, 40 in the rear and 60 up front. Now as I said in that video, the layout of the engine really has nothing to do with where the power is going in the vehicle however, and that's where Acura's super handling all wheel drive system really makes a difference. So if we're taking a look at the car conceptually, we have the front wheels here and we have the rear wheels back here. In Acura's super handling all wheel drive system, we still have a transverse engine, so that means we still have an engine right up here. We have a V6, for instance, in most of the super handling all wheel drive vehicles. And then we have the transaxle right here. And the transaxle is a combination front axle and transmission. That's why it's called a transaxle in a transverse car and it's called a transmission in a rear wheel drive car. Now we have our front wheels connected to the transaxle. The reason that front wheel drive cars like this exist is that all things being equal, a front wheel drive car is going to be a little bit more efficient than a rear wheel drive car. Now, in our world, of course, not everything is equal, and that's really important to know because there are some very efficient rear wheel drive cars, but assuming that the loss in the transmission and the transaxle and everything else was all identical, you would get a slightly better fuel economy rating in a front wheel drive car because we don't have angle gears in this particular setup. And you do find a one angle gear in a rear wheel drive vehicle, and that's back there in the rear differential, that does cause a little bit more loss than this kind of setup. Because inside this transmission, we basically have regular old straight cut or helical cut gears, but they're basically round gears and they're meshing right like that. In a rear wheel drive vehicle, we have to turn the power 90 degrees. So we have an angle gear like this, meshing with an angle gear like that, so that way the power can go in there and then go out there. And this does cause a little bit more of a loss than this kind of gear arrangement. The reason I talk about angle gears is because they're very important to discuss when you're thinking about an all-wheel drive system. Because when you add all-wheel drive to a car, the fuel efficiency involved in a front-wheel drive car really just gets thrown out the window. Because we have the power coming out of the transmission right here, and we actually have to turn it. So what we do is we stick an angle gear here, and that sends the power from the transmission out. Now a lot of people assume that this is coming out of the right front wheel or the left front wheel, but it's not. The angle gear's input is actually inside the transmission. So this is a transaxle total because it also has the axle and the front differential in it. But the power output from the angle gear actually leaves the transmission at the same point that it enters the front differential. So it's coming out and then conceptually we have the transmission here and then we have the front differential and the rear differential and it's being split inside the transmission. So it's not just coming out of one wheel. Now the power leaves this angle gear and it heads to a rear differential unit. And the rear differential unit again has those bevel gears in it because it's sending power across the rear like that. Now a vehicle like this can't use a traditional transfer case because of course this transmission is right up here. So uh, in order to keep the front wheels and the rear wheels from binding in corners, we insert a clutch pack right here in the middle. And this acts basically as uh, you can think of it sort of as a center differential. This is what allows the rear differential and the front differential to spin at different rates. This is also what allows the vehicle to transfer power from the front to the rear. However, you'll notice a key difference in this versus rear wheel drive systems, or should I say certain rear wheel drive systems. And that is that even if this clutch pack is completely connected, the most you can ever get front to rear is 50% in a traditional transverse all wheel drive layout like this. Now when you have 60% of your weight up front, 40% in the rear, even if you split the power 50-50, you're going to have some decidedly front wheel drive characteristics out on the road. And that's where super handling all wheel drive really varies from the systems that you'll find in something like a Toyota RAV4, a Honda CRV, or even Volvo products out there, the Audi A3, uh, certain Volkswagen all wheel drive products as well. To change the feel, Acura figured out a way to send more power to the rear than the front. And they did that using the same basic structure up front. What they did is after this clutch pack right here, they insert an acceleration device, which is what they call it. Uh, and you can basically think of this as a mini transmission. In the old Acura RL, this actually had some variable ratios. It could go from you know, approximately 0.5% uh, faster to uh, it's about 1.7% faster uh, than the front. 
So this acceleration device would engage and it would actually make these wheels spin about 1% uh, or so faster than the front wheels. The effect that that has on the car is it actually shifts the power dynamic to the rear. So you get more power in the rear than in the front. Depending on the system and depending on the setup, it can actually send about 90% of the power effectively to the rear wheels versus the front. This means we now have a vehicle that can send 90% of its power to the rear, so it has a rear wheel drive bias whenever it wants to, but we still have 60% of the weight up front. This is why Acuras with Super Handling All Wheel Drive handle very similarly to Audis with Quattro. And Audis of Quattro sometimes actually have a poorer weight balance because they put their engine entirely in front of the front axle rather than right on top of the front axle, which can result in a slightly poorer weight balance versus the Acura Super Handling All-Wheel Drive system. But Acura doesn't stop there. They have another trick up their sleeve, and they have a torque vectoring rear axle. Basically what they do is they put some clutch packs, series of clutch packs, on the rear axle unit like this, and this allows the transmission and the rear axle together to work to send 90% of the power to just one rear wheel. So the way this works is the transmission sends power to the back here, the acceleration unit speeds up the wheel, and then this rear differential unit then sends all the power to this one rear wheel, making this wheel spin faster than any of the other wheels on the car. And this is why Acura's super handling all-wheel drive systems are actually superior in feel in the corners to something like Audi's Quattro system, because most of the Audi Quattro vehicles don't have a torque vectoring rear axle, and that really is what gives this a different dynamic in the corners. Super handling all-wheel drive is an excellent way of demonstrating the difference between front heavy and front wheel power biased, because this system can actually be rear biased, as I said, and it also has that torque vectoring axle. So if we're turning around this corner here, the car will make this outside rear wheel spin faster, which actually helps push you around the corner, and it feels very neutral, very natural that way, very rear wheel drive-like when you're going around that corner power on. Now, if you're power off around this next corner, the vehicle is still front heavy, so the vehicle will still tend to plow and resist turning direction like you would normally get in a front wheel drive car. This actually means that in certain circumstances just below the limit, that if you actually applied a little bit of power rather than power off around the corner, you will get a better turn in in a super handling all wheel drive system than if you left the power off. SHAWD has the ability to disconnect that center coupling and therefore improve fuel economy on the highway in most situations. When you compare that to something that torque vectors and has a rear bias, like a BMW X5M, I know that's kind of a strange comparison here, but uh, hear me out. So we have the front axle right here, and then we have the engine in the X5M, which actually sits just about behind the axle. So it's a uh, V8, so we have eight little cylinders there, and then we have the transmission in the vehicle right there, and the transmission in most rear-wheel drive vehicles tends to be positioned approximately between the front seats, so the front seats are kind of like that in the car. Power goes back here to the rear axle, and then we have a transfer case right here in the middle, and the transfer case can send power to the front when it wants to. It actually is kind of across the side like that rather than directly in the middle. Now, the BMW X5M and X6M also have a torque vectoring rear axle, and they can again send 100% of the power to whichever rear wheel that it would like to. But in a setup like this, it can completely disconnect the front rather than completely disconnecting the rear. So in an X5M or an X6M, if the vehicle wanted to, it could have a decidedly rear wheel drive bias and still have a torque vectoring axle and still have a perfect 50 to 50 weight balance. I hope that video helps explain how super handling all-wheel drive works. Go ahead and click that subscribe banner at the bottom of your screen so you can be updated on all of my latest videos. You'll also find additional all-wheel drive and hybrid system videos on my channel, so go ahead and hunt around on there, and I'll see you next week.